I'm Howard Reisman, the CEO of Stock Rover. In this video, we're going to cover some of Stock Rover's advanced charting features. I'm going to focus on charting a single ticker. A separate video called Comparison Charting will cover charting with multiple tickers. The topics we're going to cover in this video are technical charting, fundamental charting, and events. We will begin with technical charting. So let's begin by switching to chart mode. Let's select our data set. Let's use the Dow 30. Let's select Boeing as our target company. And we have a two year period selected. Let's work with that. To access the technicals menu, you click on the technicals button and check the technicals you want. The first one and the most popular technical indicator is the simple moving average or SMA. If we check that, we can now see that the SMA 50 day average and 150 day average lines are drawn. We can change the number of days to use for the averaging periods via the menu. We can also change the number of averaging periods to draw. So let's create three averaging lines, a 20 day, a 100 day, and a 200 day. Go 20, the 100, and the 200. Click done. Here you can see each of the lines drawn in a different color. As you change time periods, the lines are redrawn accordingly. So here's a five-year chart. Here's a one-year chart. Some investors prefer the exponential moving average, which weights recent days more heavily than days further in the past. So to do this, we simply go back to the technicals menu, uncheck the simple moving average, and then check the exponential moving average. Like the simple moving average, you can select how many lines to draw and how many days to average for the exponential moving average. Stock Rover also has Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands show where the price lives relative to the price movement of the last 20 days using two standard deviations as the bandwidth. Both the number of days and the number of standard deviations are settable. For example, let's change the bands to a 30-day period and a three standard deviation spread. The next set of technicals all show as secondary charts. First up is the Moving Average Convergent Divergence, or MACD. Let's create the MACD chart for Boeing. The MACD is a complex indicator. One line, known as the MACD line, is drawn as the difference between a fast and slow exponential moving average, or EMA. The default periods are 12 days for the fast and 26 days for the slow. These periods can be changed to whatever you like. A second line, known as the signal line, which by default is the 9-day EMA, is also drawn. When the MACD crosses above the signal line, it is considered a buy signal. The MACD crossing below the signal line indicates a sell. With all secondary charts, such as the MACD, you can change the parameters that drive the chart via the hamburgers. You can also delete the chart altogether by clicking on the X. Two additional technical indicators are the Relative Strength Index, or RSI, and the Money Flow Index, or MFI. For the purposes of this video, I'll show the RSI. But both can be drawn together. Both the RSI and the MFI are used to help determine whether a stock is oversold or overbought by looking at recent daily gains versus losses. The MFI weights days with higher volume more heavily whereas the RSI does not. The scale ranges from 0 to 100, and the general rule of thumb is a value over 70 indicates overbought conditions, whereas under 30 means oversold conditions. The last technical is volume. To better illustrate this chart, I'm going to switch to a three-month period. There are two options with this chart. The first is to draw a moving average line. And the second is to call up and down days different colors. 
Let's delete these charts as we switch over to fundamentals. Change the period to 10 years. Fundamental charts means charting things beyond price, such as PE, revenue, net income, price to book, or debt to equity. In Stock Rover, both Premium and Premium Plus plans allow you to chart from hundreds of fundamental metrics. By default, the Fundamentals menu shows you popular fundamentals. How we can select from a much wider palette of metrics. You can search for metrics by typing text that matches a metric name or matches something in the description. Here I type debt and you can see what matches. You can also use the metrics browser to find the metrics you want to chart. This is what the metrics browser looks like. It has a set of folders. You can search by name. It has a description of each metric that matches. To chart a fundamental, just click on the box. In either case, when you select a metric, it is added to the shortcut menu for future reference. Stockware also has the concept of metric packages, which is a set of metrics which are charted together. This is the default set of metrics packages we provide that you can see here. So for example, we can choose margins to see Boeing's gross margin, operating margin, and net margin over the last 10 years. You can also create your own metrics package. You do this by simply selecting the fundamentals that you want. For example, let's select price to book, price to earnings, and price to sales. So these three things are charted together. To create a metrics package, we simply click on Save as New Metrics Package and give it a name. And now you see the metric package is added to the metric package list. The last thing we'll look at is events. So I'm going to clear the fundamentals chart to create room. I'm going to clear the Bollinger Bands. I'm going to switch to a two-year chart. There are six types of events stock over can mark on charts. They are earnings announcements, stock splits, dividends, the maximum drawdown point, portfolio activity, and alerts. Let's look at each in turn. For example, with events, let's switch to Comcast. Let's start by looking at the earnings events. Normally these come every quarter. On Comcast we can see a series of rectangular boxes indicating earnings events. If we mouse over the box, we get the details including the announcement date, the actual EPS, the expected EPS, and the percentage surprise from the expected EPS. If we mouse over past events to see Comcast's history, we will see that they have a tendency to have small positive earnings surprises every quarter. Let's now look at split events. So we'll uncheck EPS and we'll check splits. To pick up a split for Comcast, we have to go a little further back in time. So we'll go back to the beginning of 2017. If we look closely, we'll see a diamond here, and that indicates a two for one split that occurred with Comcast stock on February 21st, 2017. The next event to look at are dividend events. Comcast pays dividends, and if we check the dividend event, we'll see a series of circles that are drawn. If we mouse over a circle, we see the dividend date and the amount of the dividend. The date we show is the ex-dividend date, which is the date when the stock is trading without the value of the next dividend. Or in other words, if you buy on or after the ex-dividend date, you will not get the next dividend. From a chart perspective, it is when the price is adjusted to reflect the future payment of the dividend. The actual payment date is generally several weeks after the ex-dividend date. So if we mouse over the dividends, we can see Comcast's quarterly dividend payments.
we can see that they increase the dividends generally once per year as the dividends are unchanged for four quarters and then there's an increase. The next event, Max Drawdown, shows the point of biggest loss in the charted period. The maximum drawdown is indicated by an upside down triangle. If we mouse over it, we can see that the maximum drawdown in the period charted is 28.45%, which occurred on May 8, 2018. If we widen the date range, typically the maximum drawdown event will change. However, in the case of Comcast, that was actually the worst period in the last 10 years, and the maximum drawdown date did not change. The next event is the portfolio activity event. I'm going to switch back to a two-year period and actually change the date to be a three-year period. I'm also going to clear some of the other events so we can just focus on portfolio events. When we check portfolio events, we see a triangle pointed upwards. It will show the buys and sells that occurred in any of your portfolios. For example, I first purchased Comcast stock on December 30th, 2016. I see that on February 6th, 2018, I bought 500 more shares of the stock. And then on December 12th, 2018, I sold 400 shares of the stock. The last event or any alerts that I set on Comcast. I had set up an alert when the price had dropped below $38, and that alert fired on February 8th, 2019. So let's see that. So the alerts are designated by a sideways triangle. And when I mouse over it, I can see the alert that Comcast fell below $38 on February 8th, 2019. So that is a brief tour of the advanced features of stock over charting. All the examples show one stock, but everything can be done for multiple stocks. As a last example, let's do a PE chart of Google and Facebook. First we reset the chart. Then we'll add Google as the primary ticker, and Facebook as a comparison ticker. Let's set the period to five years. Let's also select a fundamental chart. Let's do the PE multiple. Here we can see Google and Facebook's price chart together along with their PE chart below. I've shown two comparison tickers, but you can have up to 12. The only advanced feature we did not cover was ratio charts. Ratio charts is covered in its own separate video. So that completes the tour of advanced charting and stock over. Please be sure to check out our other videos in charting. And thank you for watching.